All right. So went on a bit of a, a thrift trip, a little bit of a thrift haul. I'm gonna go over what I what I got. Um, Ninety percent of it I picked up today. There's uh, two items I picked up yesterday that I happened to pop into thrift store I go to. So first thing, I'll just start one end and work my way down. These I just thought were weird. So whenever something that doesn't really look familiar in any way or I haven't seen before, I'm gonna at least pick it up, flip it over, and look. So what I found here, Tommy Bahama plates. Tommy Bahama is a good brand for resellers, especially clothing, Tommy Bahama. I don't do any clothing, or at least I try not to. It's just not my thing, not really into it. From what I've gathered from people who do clothing, there's a lot of money in it, if that's what you wanna do, uh, but you get a lot of returns. And I would rather not have to deal with that. I work right out of my home. So having a lot of returns coming back and forth, stuff like that. Not my thing. So I looked them up and these are um, Melmine, which also clicked a second time because there's money in a lot of the Melmine stuff, specifically bowls that have, um, what they would do is take multiple colors of the, the plastic and they would mold bowls and the they would change, ex they wouldn't be identical. As the production line would go through the different batches, each bowl would come out looking different because of the way that they introduced the colors. So I flipped them over, gave them a look, and th this set, I think they were, I think somebody sold them 30 bucks free shipping. I won't do free shipping, but they were a quarter piece. There was four of them. At my Goodwill, they have uh, a dishes section where, I don't know, I think they just got sick of pricing them and tagging them or sitting on it for a long time. So they just put them out there and every individual piece, fork, plate, bowl, glass 25 cents each which will eventually get me to the one of my other pieces i got i got a story for that but you know i should get okay money for that but easy ship they're they're plastic so i don't think you can break them you can break anything i guess but you'd have to try pretty hard so easy easy list easy pack i'm okay with that new item to add to the repertoire new item to add to the repertoire of things that i sell so now I'll keep my eye out for uh, Tommy Bahama plates, which I didn't even know was a thing. Next up, got a Panasonic portable CD player with like, it's got like built in speakers to the CD player here. Battery powered. There was, the battery compartment was clean. You always want to check that. That's, that's a mistake I've made way too many times where I'm like, ooh, that's a great item. And then you pop it open and there's corroded batteries in there and, you either got to spend a lot of time making sure all that corrosion comes out or you're just out. But this is really good return on this. There's a couple of them listed, so I might shoot low. I'll have to test it out, of course, because I haven't had a chance to test any of the stuff I'm showing you today. But that's part of the part of the game. You know, I assume I'm going to sell it. I don't assume that it's broken, but there was a few of them listed. So I'll probably shoot for the low price. Not always how I like to do it. But just because so few were selling, but when they do sell, they had a pretty decent value. Um, so I'll, I'll probably shoot to be the low one. Also, it is battery powered, but there, um, there's an AC adapter. And it looked like all the other ones had the adapter. So I'll either, maybe I'll have one that matches up from those phones I had a couple videos ago. But uh, if not, I'll just shoot for the low price and, and hopefully flip that pretty quick. But it was pretty good money. Um, paid four bucks for that. Next up when it rains it pours i hadn't seen a flip clock in forever about two weeks ago i found a panasonic i think it was it might have been a sony flip clock but it was a very it was like the pinnacle uh, 125 bucks plus shipping on that um, but i found almost uh, a week later my timeline's not great but but either way within I hadn't seen one in a year, and now I've had two in a couple weeks. But I paid $3.99 for this GE one. GE is not the best brand for stuff, but flip clocks always. You always want to pick up flip clocks. If they work, you're going to sell them fairly quickly, and you'll get decent money. But the problem with GE is they just had so many variety. They just, they, like, there, there's probably six versions of this clock. They'll have a different part number of course or a different model number but the difference between them will be very little like where things are positioned or how much wood grain or the dials where they're at they just had so many varieties which a business plan sure that works um because people like variety but flip clock paid four bucks for that next up couple of couple puzzles 
video, uh, not video games, sorry, board games, board games, puzzles, stuff like that. There's value in them. For me, if they're not new for puzzles, I'm not doing it just because I'm not counting pieces. That's, that's not, I don't got time for that. And I'm sure as heck not putting it together just to make sure I have all 1000 pieces. So here's a hey puzzle. I think that's hey, H-E-Y-E. -E. I looked these up and they had a pretty good resale on them. I couldn't find this exact one, which is good news and bad news. Good news because I'll be the only one out there and bad news because maybe there's a reason why this one doesn't sell. But I paid five bucks for that new scan a barcode, two pictures, easy, easy list. Very, very easy list. The second puzzle I have is a spring box. I always say spring book, but there's one O, so it cannot be spring book. Um, again, this was not uh, one I could find a comp on, but these 2000 piece spring box, they had a pretty good resale on them. I actually have a Coca-Cola one that um, is still in my store. I'm actually surprised they didn't sell over Christmas, but is what it is new in package paid four bucks for it um looks like it was picked up some other place that's not a retail store but but some other place was selling it for 2050 and i got it for four bucks and i'll probably i don't know you'll see here here one of these spots you'll see how much I, i'm hoping to get for it all right then we get into basically the what makes up the the high end of my store is your higher end electronics and not always the super high end but but my 50 to 200 dollar range is mostly for me electronics so first up it was a good haul of electronics usually i'll get one maybe two and hope that they work these are still like i said i gotta test these um but i assume they work and if not goodwill i can return them so first up is a sony vcr uh, SLV662HF. Sony is always a good brand. Doesn't matter what the product is. Clock, VCR, stereos, tape players, whatever. Sony, uh, Walkmans, all the above. Sony is a good brand. Um, it's a good name. So when people are looking for something, even if it's not something they know a lot about, they see Sony, they see Panasonic, they go, oh, okay, that, that's a good brand. I know of that brand. I'm going to trust that one over a different one. But that one right there, um, hopefully that cleans up nice and uh and works good next up next up got a kenwood again good brand a kenwood uh kx w6070 those o's are zeros but this is a dual cassette cassette players is in the realm of things that aren't going to work cassette players are number one and the thing that's wrong with them is that most of the time there's a, a band that runs the tape drive and what happens is it stretches out over time or it dry rots or it gets a, a warp in it if it's not used for a very long period of time but usually it's like in, in a hot garage or an attic and it'll it'll bend or warp or something like that and then you get that you know that slow tape sound so it's an easy fix someone who wants this will go you could just put that in the description say works perfectly fine but the tape speed is off probably needs a new belt and anyone that knows what they're doing and wants to take that is is going to go oh great yeah that's i that's a three dollar part shipped to me and i know exactly how to fix it i've fixed it in one ever it wasn't hard but it's one of those is your time worth the money so if it's not working i would look into it and see how much time because if you go on youtube there's people who fix everything type in the model number and and what's wrong with it? And there'll be a guy, it'll be a terrible grainy video, probably from 2002. It, you will find somebody who fixed this model and you'll, you can mostly troubleshoot almost anything, but is it worth your time? That's up to you. But yes, that, that should be a, a pretty good flip. If I remember right, this was a decent one, but it'll be up on the screen. All right, next up after that. Oh, this one's a little heavy. That's how you know it's a receiver. That's how you also know if a receiver is good. It's a good way to tell. If it's heavy, it's the heavier, the better. Because the more, the more heavy, the heavier it is, the more components that are in it, the more, um, I'm not a tech guy that much, but the bigger that the components are in it, the more heavy duty they are, the heavier it's going to be, the more quality it's going to be, the more uh, components it will accept. Um, there's one called a, a, a T-Rex is like the nickname for it, but it's like the the monolith. It's like the, the best receiver of all time that you can get. And that thing is ridiculous. It's like a hundred pounds, 
but this is a Yamaha RX485. And that I actually might throw in to my collection. My receiver's getting a little little iffy, some of the some of the buttons, like it probably just needs a good cleaning. But when I run through so many receivers and stuff, I might as well just flop it out for a for a better one. You would think with all the high-end receivers and CD players and stuff that I run through that my personal stereo would be great. It's the worst because when something has value, I sell it. If I need it to function, it just has to function. So that that should be a pretty good one. Again, I'm not looking these up as I'm as I'm doing. I looked it up when I when I purchased them, um, but they'll be up on the screen. You'll see that. I don't see that. This is uh, one I've seen a lot. It is a Mitsubishi, like the car. They also made microwaves and everything. They made everything. Uh, but uh, a VSR, v, a VSR, a VCR HSU 440. I dug two of these this summer out of a guy's garage. Worst garage I've ever been to. He opened up this hoarder's garage of just hazard and danger and stink and said, yep, everything's for sale. So you're trying to like climb over stuff. And, and it was like, it was seriously like 28 degrees, really wasn't worth it. But I spotted a stack of VCRs. I said, what, how much are you getting for the VCRs? And he said some ridiculous number. So, so I narrowed it down to the, I saw those two Mitsubishis and I said, I'll take those two. And I still gave him less money than he was asking because this, I think he was a hoarder. I think someone had forced him to start selling his stuff. He was, he was an old man. I think he might've been a little, I think he might've been fading in his age, but, but Mitsubishi VCRs is a great one. It's name recognition because you can get, you can get a, a equally good VCR from another brand, but it doesn't say Mitsubishi. It doesn't have the Mitsubishi logo on the top. So, so that's, that's, it's name recognition, which is good. I'm, I'm okay with that because then it's easy for me to see it because I know what Mitsubishi is. Then this next one, ooh, another heavy one. Now this, I give a 10% chance that it works. Multiple disc changers, the ones on the carousel, I, I have no luck with. I have three of this exact thing sitting right down here. They just, the carousels, because with CD players and DVD players, most of the time you just got to replace the laser or clean the laser. That's about as far as I can go. But when it's got the carousel, it's just, there's too many moving parts and it's just a, it was a poor design in the first place. But this is a Sony CDP C67E7. Nope, 7ES, uh, but with remote. Now that you do not get at thrift stores very often. You, garage sales, yeah, because it's coming out of the home. There was another one, the, the Yamaha receiver had a remote with it. Remotes, that's, that's a rarity to find um, that's why I think these two are going to be working perfectly fine because the remotes are with them. So someone who just didn't want them anymore or maybe somebody passed or something cleaning out the house, don't use them anymore. Um, but they had the remotes with them. So I assume those two are going to work. Speaking of remotes, not to take a huge tangent, I had been saving again. I don't know why I keep saving things thinking that's a good plan. I was just piling up remotes so that when I got something that didn't have a remote, I'd be like, oh, I have the remote. There it is. Now I matched up. I don't take the time to do that. That's just stupid. So what I'm going to do to go on a tangent real quick, I think this week, I'm going to take all the remotes I have. I'm going to list them. And then when I go to list something, I can search my own store. And if I have it, I'll pull it out of my own store. And if I don't, then I'm back to where I was in the first place. So just because you have an idea doesn't mean it's a good one. But uh, to have the, the wherewithal to go, you know what, Drew? Bad idea. Let's change gears. Let's move on. Don't don't get upset about it. Don't, don't funnel yourself. Just don't pound your head against the wall trying to make your bad idea work. Just accept it was a bad idea and move on with your day. So that's just a little tip in the middle there. Uh, next up are the two items I had gotten uh, the day before at Salvation Army, I think. Um, this one, as I look at it, I'm not... Oh, it was a uh, Habitat. I'm not super happy with myself because for one, see if we can see here. Not really, but it's it's the handles cracking and stuff. It's really in rough shape. And then it's it's not a big one. So, but I, I was there. There wasn't a lot. You know, I kind of just, I hate leaving without something, um, something at least to pay for the gas or to pay for my time of being there. But this is a uh, EchoWare copper bottom, really t tiny saucepan, but a buck 50, no lid. I'll still make, you know, five, 10 bucks, whatever it says there probably for fun i'll put it over there but uh but yeah that's you know 
I've said before, you want to check out my other video, uh, three videos ago, I think, um, uh, pans, copper bottom, your vintage, uh, your stainless steel. There's a, a real good market for that right now because I don't know about anybody else, but the pans you buy from the store are trash. Like, oh, wow, what great pans. Nothing sticks to them. Oh, it's amazing. Da, 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 da. Six weeks later, it's trash. They're junk. It's a scam because they're like, oh, all we have to do is show people in an example on a commercial. Ooh, look at it. it doesn't stick. I threw a piece of plastic in there and it doesn't stick. Ooh, great. And then six weeks later, it doesn't do that anymore. But that's not their fault because there's no guarantees and blah, blah, blah. Scam. It's a scam. This next item is this brought me joy that's why i saved it till right now this this made me smile i saw from across the room and it's not a crazy you know it's it's not the by any means it's not the greatest score ever but i have been looking for one of these since i started ebay and the reason is it was the first item i ever sold i had probably 20 25 items in my store before anything sold and I was getting a little discouraged. Like I, I had some decent stuff in there and I, I had done my research and I thought I was doing it right. And I was watching how many watchers I had and how many times it had been viewed. Don't do that. That's a, that's a bad plan. I mean, if you don't have anything better to do, maybe. But watchers, views, those don't matter. It, you I mean, watchers and views as far as like traffic to your store, yeah. But does that equate to if it's going to sell? No, it doesn't. You'd think so, but no. I, I have stuff that has 1,200 views that's been in my store for nine months. I don't know why. Specific item. Maybe I'll do a video on, on stuff that's been viewed but nobody buys. It is an egg coddler. Specifically, a Royal, Royal Warcaster egg coddler. Now, Royal Warcaster, that is a great band, brand. You see that on anything? You pick it up. Speaking of that uh shelf in in the goodwill that is 25 cents found an entire set of royal warcaster actually in this royal eversham um pattern plates bowls and i paid a quarter piece for everything cups saucers all of it and i made hundreds of dollars it hundreds it bought all my kids christmas gifts it paid the bills for for a month it was amazing and when i saw it i was like oh you know let me let me look at these these look somewhat fancy and they sold almost immediately i have some of the cups left but all the plates bowls psh, gone same buyer bought a couple of them but but they're i think they're very collectible i think they might have had a lot of value at some point uh but yeah royal warcaster and egg coddlers so i every thrift store i've been in for almost two years i've checked every knickknacky shelf every corner shelf and training my eye like I was out hunting morales, mushroom picking. You got to see a couple of them before you can find them. So you pull up your phone. I don't know if you guys mushroom pick, but this is a little tip. Pick up your phone, flip through some pictures of morales. You'll find them faster because your eye adjusts to it and starts looking for them. So I've been looking for this, adjusting my eyes, looking for these for almost two years. And I finally found them. I found four of them, I think. Yeah, four. Four of them. One of them, the lid's broken, but whatever. I'm going to sell them as a set anyways. Um, pretty good money. Not hard to ship. All the, all the above. They come in a fancy box. If you ever find it with the box, value definitely goes up. But this just, my heart, oh, finally. And now I don't have to like actively look for one. It was really getting to the point where it was an obsession where I'm like, I have to find one. Um, but now that I have, I can back off a little bit. And if I find one, that'll be great. But but egg coddler. Yeah, my and the worst part was, I don't know if I mentioned that already, the worst part was that my girlfriend picked them up. She doesn't sell eBay. She she barely is a thrifter, not really much of a garage sailor. And she's like, oh, these look neat. I looked it up. I think it has some value. You want to try selling it? Boom. Sold in like 24 hours. So so always be learning. That's that's the point there. Always be looking out for something new to add to your store because you, ne you never know what's a good seller until you actually put it in your store even if it shows sales you, you don't really get a feel until it's in your own store of how long how much all that until your hands are actually on it uh next up i don't do a lot of retail arbitrage that's not my thing i i've gotten bit on it a couple times but what i do like to do is whenever i'm in a store grocery store walmart dollar general whatever 
I'll attempt at least, now I won't spend a lot of time, but I'll attempt to quickly, I'm a fast walk room sore. You've seen me, I am fast walking everywhere, but I'll attempt to pay for what I'm getting. So I had to get a, I didn't have to, but I got a fold up uh, six foot table, plastic table. I had some friends coming over. Our kitchen table really isn't, isn't good for more than more than four people. So I was like, oh, let me pick one of these up. While I was there, so let me check the clearance section. I don't know why Walmart, because my Walmart, I don't know about yours, but my Walmart toy department is empty. So I think they're still dealing with shipping issues, trying to make up from, from Christmas and all that. Um, but the toy department's empty, but then the clearance department is full of toys. So why wouldn't you just leave them on the shelf at full price instead of just having empty shelves with, with nothing? So I don't know. I looked out and there was some pretty good stuff. First off, it, and it did, it paid for the table plus, plus snacks for that evening when my friends came over. And first up is a Avengers Captain Marvel little figurine. Paid four bucks for that. It was original 984. I think it's selling for more than uh, original price anyways. So pick that up. And I like having new stuff. It's just, it's just nice to have a few new items where you can scan the barcode, take a picture, new in box. You don't have to point out any defects or anything, but yeah, paid four bucks for that. Plus tax, of course, on all of it. Uh, and then I got four of these. Um, I might keep one of these because I really like the Mandalorian, uh, but Mandalorian Super Commando. They were originally twenty four eighty eight. And I paid 12 bucks for them. And these these are selling more than $24.88, I'm pretty sure. Um, again, you'll see it. I don't. I looked it up at the time. I don't really remember now. But these look pretty cool. Let me see if I find one with a yeah, the sticker not in the way. But these look pretty cool. I might have to keep one of those, put it on the shelf. But I'm one of those weird collectors. If I do, it's not coming out of the box. It'll look like this in 20 years. Next up is this bad boy. So I go into... This is a Frozen 2, uh, like, it's like a carrying case, castle type thing. If you know, for, I've actually never seen Frozen. I have three small children. I have never seen Frozen. This is for Frozen 2, never seen either one. I don't know why. Nothing against it, just I missed it when it came out, and now it's not, like, top of their list for ones to watch. But the thing with that one is, it's in the clearance section. There's six or eight of them. I paid 10 bucks for it. Original $35, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm about to scoop six or eight of these into my cart. Because if you if you see, wherever I put it, um, how much those are going for, that's a good, good markup. So I'm about to scoop six or eight of these into my cart. And then I notice that this handle on the box, on all the ones that are there, it's like a punch-in handle, um, this is completely ripped out on all of them. So I was, I'm like, oh, okay, that's why they're here. But I don't want to do that because I don't want to have to save my listing and all that. So there was one in perfect condition. I took the one. I go up to the counter to pay for it. And it rings up 35 plus tax. And I go, no, 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 this ain't it. So long story short, they were mismarked. Walmart, on the other hand, though, does have a policy. If it's their fault and they mismarked it, I still don't have to, I still get to pay the mismarked price. It took me 20 minutes to get a manager to get an answer that I already knew the answer to, but such is life. I didn't really have a busy day, you know, kind of taking it easy. So I, I waited around. They weren't on sale. And, and that's, that's what she was, she was getting a little, I think she was getting a little testy with me. I couldn't tell. Maybe that was just me thinking that being sensitive or something. But I said, I'll tell you what. You give me this one for 10 bucks. Let me go on with my day and I won't go back and get the other six also for 10 bucks. Maybe you could use your, you know, intercom, tell them to maybe move those off the shelf. But yeah, that, that is a policy. So if, if you're ever in a store, it's not like you can just move something into a space and say, Hey, look at, look at the price. Oh, it's less. No, it has to be like advertised. Like they just messed up or they put the numbers up wrong or something. I wouldn't do anything like purposefully. That's, that's, shady and immoral but if it does happen you know that's not it's not my fault that it happened and it was a colossal waste of my time because it happened so i was like okay i you know i don't ask for much but i deserve this you you guys messed up you wasted 20 minutes of my day i would like this for ten dollars and she eventually didn't have a problem with it but took a little little smooth talking a little convincing but i'm good at that but that's all that as far as a thrift haul 
that's that's good because because I compete with a lot of people in a small town over three thrifting places and uh, two of which are only open four days a week. So so that for me is a is a win all around. So that's gonna be all for this one. I hope you enjoyed my thrift haul. I hope you stick around for more. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Tell me why. Uh, see if I can switch up how I do things for the next videos. Like, uh, share it. I already said to like it. Share it. Bell icon if you want to know when the videos come up. Should be Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. If I can keep that going, I'm, I'm trying to trying to get a schedule going. That's that's a lot of a lot of your day to day life. If you find you don't have enough time for stuff, you probably need to make a schedule. I'll see you on the next one, and be good to each other.